and welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World and I want to explain to you today about our wonderful woven jelly roll rug. Now this is combining two techniques together. Um, you may have seen some of our other rugs that we've woven but and you may have seen some of our jelly roll rugs. So I decided that we should combine the two together because a lot of people own different tools and we'd like to encourage you to um, use those tools properly. But here we've used um, our weaver set and we've woven these strips here. They have batting inside them. Then we've used the jelly roll tool to make the um, rope to go around the outside. So it's just a way of combining two techniques together to give you a run wonderful effect. And it's fabulous to make um, these sort of rugs out of all of that stash that you've got laying around. Because I know if you're like me, you've got lots and lots of fabric um, strips left over out of other projects. Now, before we go on, I just want to show you, you may already know about the woven rugs that we've done. Um, once again, this is just woven. This is using the bigger tool that's in this, the weaver set and so is this circular one. So we have patterns for all of these and you know we've got a woven placemat here. So there's lots of wonderful things you can do with weaving. But here's the new pattern that we're releasing. This is a woven jelly roll rug. This is for this rug that's on the table. We've got the pattern for the um, other woven rugs that you may already know about, but this pattern here has the two different shapes in it so you could make any shape you want then we also have all of our range of jelly roll rugs so this is our beautiful butterfly pattern you can um, make it in any color combination this is our bear jelly roll pattern we have for the cat lovers we now have a cat jelly roll rug um, these are fabulous to hang on the wall or put on the floor in anybody's bedroom or even make this sort of one up for your lovely furry friend. And then there is the original jelly roll pattern that not designed by us but very very clever pattern. So we have all of these patterns available um, for you to make any style of rug you want. Now to start with the tools we use are the the weaver set so we have two different sizes in these we have the two and a half inch wide one and the one and a half inch wide one now if you have our original sasha sets which are the yellow the fluoro yellow ones you'll notice these ones are much different because this has got a much wider split here to allow the fabric and the batting to go through once it's folded over both sides so for the um, this rug on the table here that I'm going to demo to you we use the one and a half inch size strip and we cut our fabric three inches wide to go through that one then when we do the outer edge we're going to use the the jelly roll sasha but it's not quite as wide here but it is still wider than our original yellow set. So make sure you have the right tool for the job because otherwise you might start um, using them and it doesn't work properly. That means it's the wrong size or the wrong style. But um, to do the woven pieces, we've cut the fabric three inches wide and then we've put it through the tool. So here it is already folded for you. Now you will need to cut your batting, but you can cut your batting the same width, but we find it's better if it's cut a little bit narrower than your three inch strip. Once you've got your batting on there, and on here I've used the Hobbs Heirloom double sided fusible batting because it, it, I can iron it on, but you can use any batting you want. I've just used up scraps of my batting that I use for all my quilts. I just lay them out, cut my strips. Then we fold it in and in till it meets on both sides and try and get it fairly well centered with that fold. Then just press that start. Now pressing that at this stage allows you to get it into the tool accurate. So hold the tool by the handle. It has a little handle on it there. I've designed it with the handle. Now come up from the bottom and then we're going over that center bar. 
So now what we're going to do once we've got it threaded is put it onto your ironing surface and I do recommend you use the double fork pin with the two prongs because what that's going to do is when we pin that into the ironing surface it's going to give it nice equal tension on both sides. Two single pins will allow the fabric to stretch more one side than the other particularly with the batting in there. Cup up the sides and we just press this with the iron and it's so easy to do you just keep pressing it along. The sasha tool has a curve here now I've designed that curve there to fit the side of any iron. I, you know, a lot of times I use my big regular iron, but just use that iron against that. And you just keep pushing along until you get the whole strip pressed. Now if you've got big long strips, move the pin about every 12 inches and keep ironing until you get the whole lot of the strips done. And as this one is, as we showed you before. It just folds it over beautifully. Now the next thing we're going to do once you get a lot of these made and even if you have to join strips together join them together before you put them through the tool and decide whether you want to join it on the straight or the diagonal. I prefer a diagonal join because it sits much flatter for me. So join the strips together if you need to, then lay the batting on it, then put it through the tool and then we're ready to start weaving up our pieces. So with this rug we've cut a backing piece of fabric. Now we cut this as a rectangle to start with, this piece here. This backing fabric is only going to be underneath your weaving. You do not need it underneath your jelly roll rope just so cut it a little bit bigger than what your weaving is going to be in in the pattern we give you a size to cut it to but you might want to alter that size to suit the size rug you're doing so here we've got a little sample of our backing the backing we're going to use now I could use this side facing out onto the floor or I could use this side facing out it doesn't matter what side but let's say we're going to have the print side going down to the floor cut it to size and as I said cut it to a rectangle to start with. We'll do this curve shape later on and this shape here for the curve is in the pattern so you won't have to worry about how you're going to get that we do supply that in the pattern. Now we don't want to start weaving right on the edge come in a little bit like half an inch or maybe an inch from the edge lay your strips down so we've got lots of strips made here now we want them to go nice and close against each other. We don't want to see any of the backing fabric. So lay them all down, as many as you need. Oops, we won't put that one there. We'll get another color. And just play with your colors. You know, you might use red and green or you might use a multiple of colors, which will look absolutely fantastic. So just keep laying them down till you fill up across to here, but don't go right to the edge. Leave whatever allowance you've got here, try and leave it on the other side. Because once we get this all woven and we get it stitched down, it's possibly going to move. And when we start putting the rope, the jelly roll rope around the other side of it, we don't want to cut into this, we want to have it nice, that folded edge right against the, the first jelly roll rope that we put around there. Now that we've got that done, I then suggest, and this is what we do, we use the Roxanne glue basted, and we're going to put little dots of glue under each one of these pieces. That will anchor it in position for us, so you don't need much glue. Oops, mine's a bit messy, it needs cleaning up. So just put little dots of glue and put this down in place. So keeping them nice and tight against each other. Then once we do this end, we'll do the other end. And then once I get it all done, I'm going to then press it with a hot iron to set the glue. Now if you've never used this glue before it's absolutely fantastic, it washes out, it um, won't leave a mess on your fabric and even if you put the iron on the glue it's not going to stick to the iron. So we'll just go ahead and do all of this 
then we're going to press it with that hot iron but just make sure every little piece is really tight together so just make sure that's all ironed nicely so nothing moves everything's nice and tight together then I use the bodkins now these there's two different styles in the packet but I'm going to use this little one and if you don't know what a bodkin is it's what um, it's been around for a long time for threading elastic and cord and everything so it's got this little circle at the top it's got little claws underneath so what we're going to do is use our fabric that we've got to weave with so thread the bodkin onto your fabric just clamp it on put it on there pull a little ring all the way down that will make it nice and tight then all we're going to do is weave under and overs so it makes it so easy and having it anchored down with the glue on either end those first lot of strips are not going to move so you keep weaving all the way through take the bodkin off and then we'll take the next row through so here we go bodkin on but you can appreciate if, you, if your strips weren't long enough, having pieces all joined, how great it could look. So we started with an under. So this next one, we're going to go start with an over and go under. So it's very simple. I think we all know how to, to weave. Unders and overs, unders and overs all the way through. So you just keep going like that. Now it's very important to keep these all tight again, as we mentioned keep every strip nice and tight against each other because that's what's going to keep the rug all held together so let's use another strip so this time we come on this side so we're going over again just always opposite to the last strip that you put on it'll get quite messy but you'll just keep adjusting it as you go and it's great fun there's not a lot of sewing in doing these sort of rugs. You know, like if you've got time now to start making these or any time of the year, they make great gifts. You know, anybody would love a homemade gift like this. Even if you want to do placemats like this, you could because they're nice and soft and very pliable. So just keep weaving up. So this time we're going under. And you can see I've used all different greens and different shades, but they're all going to start to come together beautifully. And make a really lovely show of colour. So now I'm going to now just pull all of these tight up against each other. And it's a good idea to just get them both ends and pull them in, nest it all together. Now you'll just keep weaving it all up like that and then you'll pop the glue underneath both edges all the way down both edges and then I would suggest you st stitch around the edge just to keep it all together once you've got it all woven and all pressed so the glue's all set. Like a lot of times I thought pinning all of these would help me but truly by the end of it I had so many pins in it you know you need hundreds of pins to pin every end the glue is a much better option it's it's much easier to use if you make a mistake using the glue there's no problem you can pull it off and you could reapply it so you can't get into trouble with the glue and you certainly won't get any movement as you start to stitch now talking about stitching once we've got it all woven and we've stitched around the edge You've got to decide then whether you need to stitch this down. Now we've got lots of options with stitching this down as we suggest to you in the pattern. You could stitch diagonally through all of these squares all the way through which will hold it down beautifully. But sometimes with the batting and everything in there you would need to use a walking foot to do that or if you prefer not to stitch those diagonal lines you can stitch right in the ditch down on the sides of these strips and just stitch one way there's no need to go across this way just stitch down 
in the ditch. Now doing that in the ditch, I'm just going to get my pencil so you can see here, here's the ditch, here's the ditch. So you're on this side of this strip to start with and then you come up onto this over fabric and then on the side of the under, then on the over. Now if I'm going to stitch down both or each sides of those strips, I would have the monopoly invisible thread in the bobbin of my machine and in the top because using this thread you're not going to see it. If I run off the ditch and run onto one of the strips, if I used a coloured thread, what colour thread would I use that would blend with all of these? So the monopoly is the best option for this. And there's lots of videos on our website and on YouTube on how we recommend you use this thread. Now if I was going to stitch this in the ditch, I would use either one of these feet. This is an open toe foot, it has nothing in the middle. So when I'm stitching with this, you can see there's nothing in the middle here at all. It gives me a very clear visual of where I'm stitching. Or there is the um, stitch in the ditch foot. This has got the little guide that comes down through the middle. Now you can get these for all machines. These ones here are for my beautiful Benina machine, but you might have a different brand machine, so you would ask for a stitch in the ditch for your brand and your model machine. It's got that little guide, and that little guide will sit right in the ditch. But sometimes this can get caught up under all those unders and overs, that's why that would be the, the open toe foot would be the one I'd really recommend for doing this. So once you've got all that stitching done in the ditch, but you might choose not to stitch it. You, it that's fine. It will, it will all stay nice and tight because the next step we take with the jelly roll um, pieces coming around the side, that will make it easier. Now doing our jelly rolls you can cut your strips two and a half inches wide or you may have a jelly roll um, pack that you've got that you could use up. But doing with the jelly rolls, like here we've got some two and a half inch wide strips, when you, you'll need to join the strips together, join those on the diagonal, on the 45 degree angle because that sits much flatter. When we've done that, we've used the pre-cut batting. This is cut two and a quarter inches wide. Put this onto the other side of your fabric. Then we're going to fold this in and in till it meets. And we just need to press the first little bit. About two inches is what you need to press. Then we're going to use the blue jelly roll sasher tool. And we're going to go up and back down. Now that's the only part of the pressing that we're going to do. Now the next step we take is we roll all of this up, go to your sewing machine, pull this down about eight inches. Now you'll see that it's going to fold the fabric for me as I pull it down. No need to iron it this time, we're just going to pull it. Now we're at our sewing machine. We're going to fold this over. We're going to put the needle down into the machine and the pressure foot down to anchor that. Then I would suggest at this stage to have your quarter inch foot on your machine. Now just you can use a regular quarter inch foot but the foot I like to use is the quarter inch foot with the little guide that comes down the side. But if you don't have one of those, a regular quarter inch foot will be fine. Now this foot's on the machine and that guide will sit right on the edge of the fabric and we're going to stitch a quarter inch in. So while you're at the machine, you're going to be stitching down with the foot. When you get level with that sasha tool, we're stitching down, down, down. When we get close to the sasha tool, just need to get this all straightened out as if it would be in the machine. We're going to pull this down so it's under the foot of the machine. It's already folded over. Let's use the pin to make sure that's anchored. So that's where it's sewn. We just fold this in. We pull down with the tool 
and the needle is of the machine is holding that in place you roll over and you stitch so you just keep pulling folding and stitching pull fold and stitch until you get the whole string done once you get that done we've got one made up here in a different color combination but this is what it looks like and do roll it into a ball okay roll it up into a ball because it's a much more control for you than just having it floating all around your sewing room now once we get that done go back to your woven piece and then get the pattern piece out for the curve and cut the corners off cut the corners around here on the four corners the pattern piece is in two pieces so you will have to cut it up and stick it back together um, because it wouldn't fit in one sheet of paper so do what we say in the pattern sheets by joining them together so you get that nice curve trim this around and then you're basically just going to be joining this on now in the pattern we tell you how to taper the ends do take note of that because you will need to taper the ends and then you're just going to start putting this against each other really close now we've got a little fold here okay that fold there don't push this in again into that fold it's just going to sit against it just sit it right against it and then you're going to do a nice zigzag. I don't know if the camera can pick that up for you, but just do a nice zigzag joining the jelly roll string together. And just keep going around and around, doing as many rows as you want to get the rug as, as big as you want. It's very simple and it's very easy, but you can see we've got lots of different colors. We've got lots of different joins in it just use up those scraps and you can make a beautiful beautiful rug and the back of it looks just fine so it's really lovely um, way to use up that stash and I think we all need to start to do that because if you like me I've got such a collection so remember the tools we use we use the weaver set which is the purple ones and we color code these now in colors so you know what's the right tool for the job we use the jelly roll sasha do make sure you get the right feet for your machine because the feet for your machine makes such a difference to your um, the ease of stitching we do use the glue we use the pre-cut batting and we use the bodkin set that's really a handy set to have I really recommend that because you can use them when you do your all your rugs when you do the placemats and we're doing lots of things with different weaving now and, and really I find I'm using these all the time so they're a great little set um, remember we have the patterns for all our jelly roll rugs we have the patterns for the um, woven rugs and of course we've got the new pattern for this woven jelly roll rug and we've got lots more to show you so we'd love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel just watch any of our YouTube um, videos and you will see a uh, a section in there to subscribe hit that bell and do subscribe because I'd love for you to get all of the notifications on all the different things we can show you and we'd love you to share this around so other people get to know of all the exciting things that they can make and do do visit our website www.pqw.com.au have a look around at all the different things we, we've got we do have kits done up of, of different things we don't sell fabric we only sell the tools we leave the fabric sales to all those beautiful shops out there we love to support shops your local shops may have our patterns so please go visit all your local stores and um, shop around collect your fabric collect all your goods and let's get started with your stitching so thanks for viewing and till next time bye for now